right, everyone, thanks for coming. And um, this weather is really throwing it into us. Um, those on live stream, thank you for um, being on live stream as well. Um, what I'm going to do today is talk about this three things mostly in my presentation. Talk about sort of an overview of the farm income projections for 2018. They're down again. Um, 2019 looks like another year of tight margins, but there's signs of improvement. And then we're going to see some mixed signals on the state of the farming sector here in the state. I'm calling it a tale of two farms. I'll get to more of that in a bit. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is the 2018 Farm Bill, what to expect on the crop side, as well as the, 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 the market facilitation program that's not part of the Farm Bill, but is, is part of where it fit in and how it provided short-term help. And the last thing I'll do a little bit on the, uh, on the dairy um, chain programs that came with the new Farm Bill. This is USDA data on the, um, you, the net farm income or the cash version of it. The, the, the net farm income takes into account inventory adjustments, but especially depreciation, these other non-cash costs. And what you see is it's down. 2017 was a, a bump up as we sort of thought we hit the bottom, and then this last year we're going down again relative. So down 8 to 12 percent from the previous year, 2017. These are the forecasts. This is revenues from crops um, the, the last five years. This is the USDA t data as well. The total revenue from crops is up 1.5 percent. Corn is up 4 plus percent. Soybeans almost over 4.5 percent. Um, the other crops are down, but you can see there there's more revenue. Prices haven't been the best, but we had large yields, and so overall the um, revenue from crops is up. This is at the national level, though. On livestock products, it's down. Um, beef is down over a percent. Dairy is down big time, over 7 percent decrease. This is the gross revenues. And this is part of what's really dragging down the farm income is this reduction in um, what happened on the particularly dairy for us, but you can see broadly beef. Um, Government payments in the midst of these um, revenue declines have been up a lot, 18 percent. On the crop, these are primarily going to be for crops. Um, ARC and PLC are the two programs. They're down 4.6 billion dollars. That's if you go from 17 to 18, that yellow section up there. That's the decrease in um, ARC and PLC payments. Those have been paying us big, and all of a sudden they really fell off. 4.6 billion last year at the national level, made up for roughly by a 4.7 billion increase in the market facilitation program. So all what was lost for ARC and PLC support for commodity crops was compensated by MFP. And then on top of that yet is disaster payments. And so farmers aren't better off. Um, they're better off not having disaster payments because there's no disaster. But disaster payments help when there is a disaster. And so that's why they're up right there. That's from the hurricanes primarily. But government payments are up. However, revenues for so crops are up, revenues for um, livestock are down, expenses are up more, uh, particularly interest expenses. If you really look at that number, there's been an 18% increase in interest expenses. Fuel, energy is also up. Feed and labor are also up. And that's partly kicking into the why the livestock sector um, revenues are down. Um, th that's really hurting there because of the feed costs rising. So that's why we have down, farm income is down. Though revenues are up for crops, the costs are risen more. So if you look at the state of Wisconsin here, um, this is our farm income, about $1.7 billion, but it's down this year um, from the previous year. So we, it's just like the national level, those same trends have been projected down. These are still estimates. We don't get the state level data yet, I mean, in a few more months. But you can see I'm somewhere around the 6%. It could easily be more. Um, we'll see how it all settles out. A lot depends on the, we had a good production year for corn and soybeans in the state in terms of total bushels. It's what they get for prices, the cropping year, is still on its uh, it's still ongoing for the marketing year for corn and soybeans. So a lot of that where the uncertainty is where the prices are going to be for 2018 crop of corn and soybeans. So income is down. This is interesting here is there's some signs that there's still strength in the farm economy. Land values for cropland, I should say here, is up 2.3 percent in the state. This is the leads the Midwest. Um, Minnesota is down over a percent. Uh, Michigan is down 0.4 percent. Um, across the only other state in the Midwest that's higher is um, um, Missouri at over 10 percent, but they started at a lower, much lower base. Um, last year we were up 9 percent plus. That was we were second in the nation, and so it's surprising. Our land values are still creeping up in the state. That's a sign of strength. Um, the balance sheets are not eroding for the farmers that are owning land due to land values falling. Um, the other one, that's the state average rental rates. Um, we don't get the broken down by district and county yet this year, um, but up over a percent added a dollar. It went up to a dollar, $140 per acre is the average land rental rate. So you can see the rate of increase is really slowed, but it's still creeping up. These are signs of strength that the farm economy 
is still um, rental rates are going up. These are looking forward some into 2019. These are the margins. Um, there's the price of milk, and then below it is a, a, a feed index. That's what these are. This is from the DMAP page. What you can see there is we went through some bad margins, but the 2019 margins looking forward are somewhere between eight to nine dollars, nine and a half dollars above a feed cost index. Better um, than we've been seeing um, previously. And, the, and these are corn and soybean margins. These are from Iowa State University. What's nice is they have a nice consistent format for decades. It goes back to 1975. So everything's been converted to dollars per bushel. And what you see, the, 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 you can see the zero line there. Green is corn, brown is soybeans. And a couple things I want to point out is um, whenever they go down below zero, negative margins, it, they go down for a while, then they get it figured out, and they come back up again sort of that cyclical nature of these crop production systems as we work these um, large crops through the system, they don't go down and then gyrate up and down. And so that gives me hope now that we're starting to come out of that here on corn and soybeans at the national, uh, in Iowa here, but everywhere as well. There's some, we're probably going upwards. Um, the worst of it is over. Um, you see that last year projected for 2018 is the, well, the second of last year. That's the trade war with um, China really cut in their soybean margins that year. But if these WASDA prices are effect, um, turn out for the 2016 crop year, or I'm sorry, 2018 crop year of 360 for corn, we're going to be about a break-even deal for um, 2018 crop on, on the margin for corn in, in Iowa, with something similar here. The other thing I'd like to point out is this would be, if that happens, we're at like a five-year negative margins for corn. We had this before. If you look back there at the late 90s and early 2000s, we had a nine-year negative margin run for corn, a seven-year negative run margin for soybeans. This one isn't as going to be as bad if we do come out of these. Um, so we'll see what the, the crop outlook is. But they're looking better than they have um, once we get into 2019. We're in, the signs of improvement. We're around the corner. It's still bad, or it's not good, but it's um, getting better. Speaking of um, bad, um, Wisconsin led the nation in Chapter 12 filings last year. This is the farm bankruptcy. We had 47 farmers in the fiscal year of 2018 declare bankruptcy in the state. That's higher than it was the year before. The next state is Nebraska, 31. There's still a lot of farm financial stress out there. Um, and what you really notice is these are the data now. The top one is the various states and what they've done since 2013. This is number of bankruptcies per year. You can see 2013 to 2018 there. The last year has been added. We're, we, the first three there are Wisconsin, Michigan, and New York as dairy states. We're all about the same, 2013, 14, 15. And then in 2016, we all of a sudden jumped up here in the state, whereas they um, flattened out. You can see there's some general trend we're upward in those other states, our neighbors, Mich or Minnesota, Illinois, Iowa. They're all trending upward, but still nowhere near where we are. Um, you normalize it per 10,000 farms. You know, each state has a different number of farms. There's a recent paper um, by Denterman et al. out of Ohio State. They have that 20-year average farm bankruptcies per 10,000 farms. Wisconsin and Michigan, both at about three, is a long-term average. For every 10,000 farmers, on average, three declare bankruptcy. Wisconsin's way above that long-run average. Um, five to six, almost seven farms per 10,000 farms declaring bankruptcy in the state, whereas Michigan was above it, and then they've quickly come down below it. They're still on their long-run average. We're something unusually hot is going on here. Um, this, the map on the left there is where they were, which counties we're talking about. The, it's hard to see the colors, but the grayish, I guess, is how it turned out now. That's one. The yellow is two um, per that county. Three is the orange, Monroe, and Green counties. The um, red is Polk County up there with four. And then Dodge County had five. You can see these where they are concentrated. They're happening a lot along that driftless area um, along the, Wisconsin, or the Mississippi River Valley and then some of our other dairy areas. This was in the newspaper this weekend, the Sunday's... Um, the State Journal, I'm sure some of you saw that, um, the, the suicide rate in Wisconsin is at a record high. It's not all dairy farmers. It's not all farmers. You can't necessarily, you can't differentiate. You don't know where they, what the, what the, um, who they were exactly in terms of profession and everything. But the, the, paper, the article is all about the um, various stories of farmers that have considered it or have actually committed suicide. Wisconsin dairy farms, the numbers are down almost half of what they were over 15 years, yet the number of cows is roughly the same in the state. So we're consolidating. That's why we're talking about this afternoon. So DATCAP's been very busy with the farm, uh, farming and stress. The Wisconsin Farm Center, you got the number there. It'll be on the slides. People are dealing with some serious troubles here. 
And at the same time, in the middle of this, you see all these signs of struggles. I've been out talking to farms. I visited some dairy farm uh, with some students. I went to visit a specialty crop farm. They're in the process of expanding. Um, in the midst of some of these lowest margins of some of these crops, they are still seeing a future. Those land values are holding. And so I've been calling it a tale of two farms. Some farms are doing fine or okay. Some farms are very much struggling. And this is the quote, right? And I think this is really a good look of what's going on out there right now. For some farmers, it is this, you know, the Charles Dickinson's opening to the, um, the tale of two cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. I think we have farmers in the state feeling both sides. Some feel one side. Some feel the other. So it's, it's a, kind of a bimodal distribution here in the state. Um, so switching now to the Farm Bill, and then we'll be done. What has the Farm Bill done for us? It just passed this year. I want to talk about commodity crops first. The big one is loan rates have increased. This is important. The USDA FSA provides these marking assistance loans. These are low-interest loans at one point above the federal rate, so like 3.5%. Um, use your harvested grain as collateral. They have been stuck at $1.95 and $5 per bushel that you enroll for a long time. They've increased them. What this is is going to provide farmers facing higher interest costs some low interest loans that they can help cash flow things after harvest before they sell their grains um, to help pay off mortgages, help fund the incoming crop they want to plant, um, you know, to buy input. So I think that'll be really good in this time of low, of high interest rates coming. PLC and ARC are primary um, commodity support programs, so for corn and soybeans, a little bit of wheat in the state. Um, they updated the payment yields are going to come around, so people are going to go in and increase your yields that they use for calculating payments, so go do that. That's a, FSA will be announcing that soon, I'm sure. The reference prices for PLC were at, fixed at 370 for corn, 840 for soybeans. They created a new effective price. It'll float higher if the markets are higher, so at the 85% Olympic of the five-year Olympic average. The reality is this is a tweak that won't matter for corn and soybeans until our market prices get up, but it looks good on paper. But in the short term, the next few years, we need a price of corn to hit that five-year Olympic average. has to hit 435 before this starts helping. We're, not, we're a long ways from that yet. Um, ARC made some small changes, mostly to increase the county revenue guarantees it provides. Um, so they're going to be higher, more likely to trigger payments when they happen. But the reality is, I'm telling people, do not expect large ARC payments for the 2019, uh, in 2019 for the 2018 corn and soybean crop. They're going to be low um, if they're even paid. Um, the next big one is program selection. The first farm bill on the, with ARC and PLC was 2014, and you had to choose one or the other for the whole life of the farm bill by crop. 2019 and 2020 will be combined. You'll make a choice which one do you want, ARC or PLC. And then every year after that, it's going to be an annual, elect, annual election. So farmers are going to have to make a choice every year, go on ARC or PLC. Which of these commodity support programs do I want? What we're anticipating, given the, the markets we're seeing and stuff, is we're expecting farmers to make a big move to PLC, which um, is, we have, that's like the old counter-cyclical payments program. So we've been relying on ARC payments. We're going to be switching to PLC, most likely. This kind of helps put it into context here. The orange bars are how many millions of dollars came into the state of Wisconsin for ARC. These are the year they were paid, so like 2015 was 200 and roughly $20 million. Um, that was ARC payments that came in from the 2014 crop paid in 2015. Um, you can see the first couple years there, we really got paid a lot on ARC. Really fell off in 2017 just as the, the wheels are falling off the bus on some of these prices. What happened in 2018 is the payments for ARC and PLC were less than $20 million in the state, one-tenth of what they were three years before. What happened is MFP, the market facilitation program, if everyone signs up for it, I did the math, at the maximum we're talking somewhere around $217 million more dollars would come into the state. Uh, this would primarily be for the soybean. Um, over $175 million would be if all the soybean production in the state enrolled in this program. Um, so you can really see that will put us back at those levels in this time of tight margins and low um, farm income. The sign-up deadline, if you haven't done this, is, is still it's been extended with the shutdown, so I Farmers, if you haven't done this yet, or people who talk to farmers, get them in there, get them signed up for this. If they grew soybeans, met conservation compliance, and have three years of adjusted gross income information, they should be eligible. The last one is the dairy margin coverage. Um, I'm not a dairy um, policy person. I work more on corn and soybeans and um, specialty crops. But MPP, the Margin Protection Program, was the dairy program in the 2014 Farm Bill. We'll call it ineffective and unpopular. Um, they really took a lot of heat to do a better program. It's been replaced with DMC, dairy margin coverage. What they do, it really is going to help the smaller dairy farmers in the, the U.S. or in the state particularly. 
um, particularly. The first 5 million pounds of production, so say roughly 210, 20 um, cow operation, those first, that first 5 million pounds, you're going to be able to get a higher margin. The margin is the farm, the milk price, and then there's a feed cost index. The gap between them is the margin. As that margin gets thinner, you have less money to pay your own self, to pay labor, to um, pay your overhead costs, and that's how you, um, above your feed costs. Um, so you want a higher margin. That means you've got money to pay these other um, inputs. You can get up to nine fifty now. It used to only be eight dollars, and it's cheap. Ten to fifteen cents a hundredweight for your um, production, your historical production, and you can coverage get for almost up to ninety-five percent of your historical production. So we're, that will be very useful for those first five million pounds. Once you go above that five million pounds, all that production, not the, the so if you have six million pounds, the next one million pounds, the margin's most likely going to be chosen is somewhere in the four to five dollar range. Uh, much lower. It's more of a catastrophic coverage. And it's really cheap again. Only it's half a cent a hundred weight for that um, for the four, five dollar margin. Once you go above the five dollar margin, the costs start to rise really quickly. And what's really nice now you can get that DMC for the, that five million or the other tier, the the, the per of your production above five million. You can combine with the new insurance policy. It's called dairy revenue protection. That will be out there as well for more price protection. So farmers on the dairy side are going to have some really new tools here, and there's some incentives to sign up for the DMC as well. So what's really going to happen is farmers are going to really find it valuable to sign up for the eight nine up to nine fifty dollar margin, probably nine fifty for fifteen cents a hundred weight for your first five million pounds, and then probably take the five dollar margin for a quarter cent or a half a cent per hundred weight for all your production above five million pounds, and then some are going to buy DRP. So I think we're going to see some tremendous. Um, this is really going to help the smaller dairies in the state. So. My overall, my thoughts are farm income is getting down for 2018 slightly, and 2019 will be another year of tight margins and income uncertainty. It's, the problems aren't over. They're just, there's some signs of um, improvement. We'll see what the markets are bringing in the future here from the other speakers. Farm Bill is going to help dairy. MFP, Market Facilitation Progr Program, provided some short-term help. Don't expect ARC payments or PLC payments to the 2019, in 2019 for the 2018 crop. MFP is a temporary program. It's not supposed to happen again, so it's going to be tight out there. And there are a lot of farms out there that are um, suffering, um, a, lot of, a lot of financial stress. Farm families have been um, stressed over these several years of low income, and so some are struggling, but some are doing okay. Um, and so we're kind of seeing a, a bi 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 bifurcation or two types of farms out there. The Bat Cat Farm Center is there. There, if some of you work with farmers, there's some publications at the back of the table on, right by the door there on helping um, tame farm stress. It's a one-page or two-sided document. Um, John Shutsky at UW-Madison here has put that together um, for helping people working with stressful farms. And the other one is a much longer document there. There's materials back there if you're interested. All right. Thanks for your attention. We'll take questions if people want. All right.